What's up everybody? All right, I wanna talk about the minor pentatonic and how we can unlock the whole fretboard using it, but we're going to use it musically. So what I mean by that is if I have my first position of the minor pentatonic, it's knowing where my root notes are, right? How to build a little bit of tension by adding those minor thirds or those flat sevens and resolving to my root notes. And then I have my fours and my fives that are like a little bit more neutral. One root note, minor third, fourth, fifth, flat seven. One minor third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, and one. I'm gonna link a video that goes through that um, and gives a little bit of a musical explanation for that position. <clears throat> it is really crucial that we sort of know and understand musically how to use that and how it relates to A minor, or whatever chord progression it is that we're playing if we're doing a blues. The reason is, if we don't have that, and then we just jump up here and we say, okay, I'm gonna learn like the next position of the pentatonic. And then we jump up here and say, okay, I'm gonna learn this position of the pentatonic and so on. What we eventually have to do is, we're sort of just memorizing at this point, the positions, and then we're gonna take this musical concept and jam it in later. Um, it's it, We might as well learn it both at the same time because it will make memorizing it a little bit easier or just learning it. If we are learning the positions, it sounds a bit scary scalular that's something that a lot of people come to me and say um my solos just sound like i'm like running up and down scales makes total sense um and then and then we're sort of like it's almost like if we you know we're memorizing the the positions of the pentatonic before we know musically how to how they function it's sort of like memorizing information for a test just to pass it right but you're not really learning what's on the test you know, we're just in that memorization um, area. We want to get away from that. We want to do the learning. So we're just going to take two positions of the pentatonic for now, and then we're going to link them. There's a reason that we're going to link them. So at this point, you should know a little bit of the, the musicality uh, behind the pentatonic and how it works, you know, and then we're going to visually uh, move from one to the other. So this is pretty simple. And the fact that I've got my A minor bar chord, I've got my A minor pentatonic, and I can see my bar chord, root note, root note, uh, sorry, I should say D string, and then uh, the, the E on the bottom, right? Those are my root notes. Right here, my bar chord, and then my minor thirds, and what have you. Now, another popular way to play an A minor would be the bar chord form. We're not gonna do open position just yet, okay? The, the bar chord form that starts on the fifth string up here on the 12th fret. What's really great about <clears throat> this position of the A minor pentatonic is it's almost the same. So learning it's not that difficult. There's only one note difference, okay? So now, watch this. I have, instead of my, my normal minor pentatonic form down here, I have 12, 15, 12, 15. That's the, the different note there. 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, and then this note again, it's the same note. 13, 15, 12, 15, right? So that minor third right there, the 15th fret on the A string, and then the 13th fret on the B string are the different notes positionally from how we would play the pentatonic down here, okay? Now, visually, I've got my A minor. There's my A, there's my root note. There's my root note right here. Right where I am, 14th fret on the on the G string, um, and that's it for that position. So now, if we target those notes, right, we could sort of play the same phrases. Right now, I have right, and it, it it's giving me the same musical benefits of playing down here. Right? There's no reason to get away from this position of the pentatonic unless you want to add these notes up here, right? So, um, or if we're going lower, it's to add lower notes. If we're going higher, it's to add higher notes, right? Just being in a different position of the pentatonic doesn't really matter all that much because this is just this, which is just this. Right, so we want to utilize the higher notes and utilize the lower notes if we're in whatever position it is that we're in. But now we're sort of looking at the guitar as a whole rather than 
this position and then it gets a, a little blurry. So if we can really get in, and the one way that I love uh, like really hammering this into students is playing the same lick in both position, positions. You know, trying to get those bends to, to, to sound somewhat the same. Are you able to do that? If you're able to do that and it gets very comfortable knowing how to phrase and how to make the same sounds, because what we don't want to do, I'm going to throw this in here really quickly, is because that's our root note, right? Let's just say the upper of the D string, the seventh fret of the D string. When people start learning the other positions of the pentatonic, especially this one, because it's very similar, they might do something like this. But that's not my root note. They're playing it as though it is because it's the upper, the 14th fret of my D string. But that's not right. There it is, right? So we gotta learn that, that musicality. Um, and a lot of that is just going to come from, from playing, but I don't want there to be any guessing anymore. You know what I mean? So if you go up to this position, you know what you're aiming for and why. Now, the middle ground doesn't necessarily need to be this position of the pentatonic and then this position of the pentatonic. This is how we're gonna bridge it together. We're gonna to do it string by string. So what we have is the, my five, eight, and then I know that up here, my 12 starts, my next position that I'm very familiar with. Okay, so now I got really just five, eight, 10, and then my next position starts. All right, that's not too hard. There's only one note, right? Down here, the A string, five, seven, 10, and then my next position starts that I'm really comfortable with. So just throwing the tens in, right? Five, seven, ten, again, and then my next position starts. Awesome, right? Five, seven, nine, then the twelve, my next position starts. And then five, eight, ten, and then this scoots up to thirteen, where my next position starts. And then five, eight, ten, and now I'm at the 12th, that position. So it gets a little bit easier than learning this position of the pentatonic, right? And then moving up and learning this position of the pentatonic, right? There's almost no reason if we can just say like, oh, wait a minute, it's really just taking the position I already know. Sorry, I added the blues note there. Position I already know, and the position I already know and can play really well and adding one note in between them. It's all that's really happening here, right? 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10. It's pretty easy, right? So when we're playing in, th that's, that's why if, if somebody were to, to play, you know, some sort of minor, I'm not thinking of what position of the pentatonic I'm in, right? That's not, that never crosses my mind, you know, if I'm playing modally and playing all over the neck. There's one note between those two positions. That's it. We're safe. Um, and, and you should be able to navigate just based on that and based on the musicality. Now we know that that's my root note, which means that's my root note. Right? That's not too hard. Now I'm starting to get it a little bit, right? So practice that. Try not to let that those tens in that one nine on the on the G string throw off your playing. Because it doesn't those tens don't need to be, all right, my upper part of this position of the pentatonic and my lower part of this position of the pentatonic. It's just one note that's bridging the two together. The best part about it is that now covers one, two, three, and four positions of our pentatonic. And we're knowing them musically now. We don't, we don't need to get lost because if we know the note values, minor third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root note, I got my root note, right? I can sort of like aim now, root note, 
flat seven, right down to my five, four, minor third, just by not taking my eye off of that root note. And then if I'm up here, my root note on the 10th fret of the B string. If I have those, then just scooting up here, still doesn't throw off musically what it is that I'm doing, right? So bear with me, I hope this is, I hope this is working. That should cover us from here to here. The best part too is there's only one more jump into the next position. So when you're here, uh, right, I'm just that one note away from restarting my pentatonic up here. So it's the same idea. Um, and in fact, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm one, well, yeah, I'm one note away. I'm not one note between like I was down here. So now my 12, 15, 12, 15, now I'm just, that 17 is the start of this position of the pentatonic. So I'm just taking the upper notes, 12, 15, 15, 14, 14, 15, 15, and using those to bridge into this 17th fret. And now I'm in this position. So if I just focus on visually seeing that A minor, visually seeing that A minor, right? Playing in this position and connecting it with the one note in between tens, nine on the third string to my position again, that I'm very comfortable with. And now I'm just going right into my next position in the pentatonic. That should be easier. That should be a little bit more musical. I hope that helps. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, as usual, let me know. And this is, uh, this is one of the lessons, the pentatonic part of the lesson um, for the Unlocking the Fretboard course. Um, if anybody is interested, of course, get in touch, email me below and um, DM me however it is that you'd like to get in touch um, and we can uh, figure out how to get you signed up.